Hello everyone, and welcome to my The Young and the Restless official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. As Sharon was thinking about Cassie in her living room, she pulled up an old photo album. A knock on the door was answered by Sharon, who welcomed Lucy, who had come to see Faith. Lucy mentioned that she had brought Faith a bracelet, and Sharon mentioned that Faith was out with friends. When Lucy saw the scrapbook Sharon was flipping through, she inquired as to whether the images included Maria. Faith was informed by Sharon about Cassie, which Lucy was unaware of. According to Sharon, Cassie passed away in a car accident when she was 14 years old. When Lucy inquired about Cassie, Sharon exclaimed about how amazing her daughter had been. When Faith came back, Lucy handed her the bracelet. Lucy informed Faith about Cassie that Sharon had been chatting to her about. When Lucy inquired whether Faith would like to hang out, Faith proposed that they meet up later. After Lucy departed, Faith inquired as to Sharon's reason for perusing the scrapbook. Given that Faith had questioned Sharon and Nick extensively about their past, she questioned whether it was her fault. Faith expressed regret, and Sharon reassured her daughter that Cassie was never far from her mind. It was necessary for Sharon to have a good cry every once in a while for Cassie. Sharon took another look at the album after Faith left. Before Sharon left the house, she took out one of the pictures and placed it in her purse. Daniel and Heather talked about Heather's lack of job offers at Chancellor Park. It might be time for her to go back to Portugal, Heather offered. Daniel mentioned that he had felt their relationship was going well. Heather explained that, since she was not working, she had meant that now would be a good time to visit her father. Daniel was reassured by Heather that she had no plans to leave Gino City or him. Heather mentioned that her dad had seemed a little lonely when Daniel inquired about Paul's condition. Daniel proposed that he and Lucy accompany Paul for a visit. Heather mentioned that Lucy would have to contribute to the choice. It could be tough to pull Lucy from town and away from fangirling over Faith Newman, according to Daniel. When Heather was younger, she recalled wanting to be friends with older girls. Audra updated Nate at Society on her job at Glissade. What did Nate think of the takeover article? Audra inquired. Audra, Nate observed, failed to mention to him that Kyle would also be employed there. Nate likened Audra's experience with Kyle to that of Tucker. Working with Tucker had taught Audra a lot, but she believed that Kyle was a completely different person. Both men, according to Nate, were rich, cocky, entitled. According to Audra, the reason she hired Kyle was due to his prior experience managing a makeup company. Is it really worth hiring someone with whom Audra had such a complicated history with? Nate wondered. Nate was accused of jealousy by Audra. Nate stated he didn't want Audra to repeat what had happened with Tucker, but he disputed that his worries were motivated by jealousy. Audra gave Nate the reassurance that she had learned her lesson. Nate questioned why Audra was depressed following their chat. Audra said that she had been feeling assaulted and that things weren't as great as she had made them seem. Audra related to Nate how Kyle attempted to convince Victor to allow Kyle to manage Glissade without Audra. Nate gave Audra some advice, telling her to fire his ass before he takes you down. The truth about Kyle being handpicked by the covert investor was revealed to Nate by Audra. Startled, Nate asserted that Kyle was collaborating with the investor to use Audra for their personal benefit. The investor, according to Audra, was the one who had genuinely told her the truth about Kyle. Nate warned that the endeavor including Glissade might out to be more problematic than beneficial. Summer entered the Abbott mansion as Kyle was taking calls for publicity. Summer insisted on knowing if Kyle intended to move, calling him delusional, if he believed he was moving Harrison anywhere. When Kyle questioned Summer about how she found out about his intentions to move out, Summer replied that Diana told her. Kyle, according to Summer, was not capable of taking unilateral decisions like sending Harrison to France. Summer was instructed by Kyle to calm down and that he was only leaving the mansion. 
Summer remained unsatisfied and wondered why Kyle would want to force Harrison out of his house. Kyle and Summer were still at odds over his scheme. Summer questioned why Kyle couldn't prioritize his son and keep Harrison in his happy and loving environment. Although Kyle countered that children travel around a lot, Summer pointed out that Harrison had already experienced a great deal of off-evil in his life. According to Kyle, Summer was even more upset when she learned that Harrison had been aware of the transfer before her. Harrison had been looking forward to the move. Summer was charged by Kyle of hurling accusations and creating a problem where there isn't. Growing more irate, Kyle claimed that Summer's whole personality had turned into a refusal to accept him on any point. Harrison needed stability. Summer cried, accusing Kyle of being indifferent. According to Summer, Kyle wasn't as concerned about Harrison as he was about hanging out with his ex-bed buddy or the babysitter. Summer promised herself that she would do something about it. After speaking with Daniel, Kyle informed Summer that her brother had requested him to attempt to see things from Summer's perspective. Summer was acting strangely, Kyle argued, since it seemed like she was being squeezed out of Harrison's life. Summer restated that Kyle's recent poor decisions were the source of her worries. Kyle, according to Summer, was providing her with ammunition to win primary custody. Kyle became enraged and encouraged Summer to bring it if she intended to challenge him for custody. Summer's quest to become Harrison's biological mother would not succeed. Kyle warned her. Summer and Kyle continued to argue after Claire entered the living room, and Summer eventually remarked, this conversation is not over, and walked out. After planting a vegetable garden with Harrison, Claire told Kyle about it. Kyle proposed that Claire go for a stroll with him. As they strolled around Chancellor Park, Kyle confided in Claire that he felt like a bit of an ass for the earlier confrontation with Summer. Kyle let go about the problems he and Summer had been experiencing. Admitting to being hard-headed, Kyle claimed he had been genuinely attempting to view things from Summer's perspective. It seems that Claire was upset with herself for walking into the middle of things. According to Kyle, Claire has been one of the most amazing things to happen to Harrison's life. Claire was moved by Kyle's kindness, and according to Kyle, Claire had grown to be a fantastic friend. Summer approached Heather and Daniel at Crimson Lights. Excusing herself, Heather went to meet Lucy. Summer chastised Daniel for discussing her with Kyle. Summer was in Daniel's thoughts, and he stated that he was just trying to help. Daniel, according to Summer, was portraying her as irrational. Summer questioned whether Daniel really believed that. Summer was advised by Daniel to avoid jumping straight to a raging custody battle. Summer recalled that she'd been told the same thing by Nick and Phyllis. Daniel advised Summer to retreat a step. Summer explained to Daniel that all she was doing was watching out for her son's welfare. Daniel told Summer how Phyllis's childhood custody dispute with him had harmed him. Daniel stated that he was aware that Harrison would not want that for Summer. Summer accepted, but she vowed that if necessary, she would fight for Harrison. When Kyle persisted in trying to weaponize the knowledge that Summer wasn't Harrison's real mother, Summer wondered how she might try to make things right with him. Kyle and Summer were accused by Daniel of being emotional and of not putting Harrison first. Says the guy that practically bailed on his own daughter. Summer shot back. Daniel took offense at Summer's remark. Sharon walked over and inquired about the situation. Summer roared, telling Daniel to stop it, and she left abruptly. Sharon expressed her optimism that everything was all right and her desire to alert Daniel about Lucy's impending visit. Daniel was reassured by Sharon that she hadn't given Lucy all the information regarding Cassie's fatal vehicle accident. Daniel claimed that the night of Cassie's death continued to haunt him. Given that he wasn't sure Lucy could take learning the whole truth of Cassie's death, Daniel was glad Sharon hadn't told her. When Heather and Lucy got together at the athletic club, Lucy told her mother about her chat about Cassie and her encounter with Sharon. Cassie's death, according to Heather, was horrible, and Daniel needed a long time to get past what happened. Lucy was baffled. So what do you guys think about this update? Let me know in the comments below. 
And if you like my videos, please press like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.